Next question is from Malls Fit. What do you think about float therapy? Well, you know, what an interesting experience. I've done it now uh, mm. maybe four times. We did it that one time. And we did. Together. Yeah. yeah. Not in the, not same. In the same tub. Though. Yeah, we yeah. were in the same yeah. tub. Yeah. 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 Clarify. Yeah. <laughs> What's touching me? Liar. Yeah. It's uh, so, okay, for people who don't know, float therapy, you lay in, uh, you know, Temperature, it's, it's what is it, body temperature water. Salt water. Highly, yeah, lots, lots and lots of, of salt. salt. So you literally float on top of it. You're inside of this, this, this you know, cocoon or it's whatever. Like a pod or something. It's a pod. You close it down. There's no light, no sound, and you're floating. And essentially, it reduces or it's trying to eliminate all sensory that's coming into the brain. So you're just sitting there and floating. It's an interesting experience. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like meditation. It's very similar to meditation. When, uh, for me, time flew. Once I got settled, it was like weird that an hour passed by. It felt like only 10 minutes. Then when I came out, I felt like my CNS was reset. In fact, I was a little sensitive. Yeah. I was a little sensitive to oh, light. The yeah. lights were yeah. bright. Yeah. And yeah, like sounds were really loud. Yeah. It was interesting because it, it really does like just, it, it takes out all those, uh, the, the excess like stimulus. Like you don't even realize you're taking in every day and, and you're always worried about, uh, you know, looking out to see if somebody's over here, over there. Like you, you just shut all that down at least for that period yeah. of time. But it, but it, if it forces you, here's my opinion on it. If, it. if it's a great way for you to, and again, we talked about this at the beginning of the podcast, biohacks, right? Yeah. The reason why I think this is a, this may be a valuable biohack for people isn't necessarily because the float tank is magic, but rather because it may be a way for people to shut off for an hour. Yeah. Well, there's a you know? there's a reason why it's making a comeback. This shit's been around forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been around since what the '60s and the '70s, right? 60s, yeah. 70s, yeah. yeah, it's been around forever, and it was not popular at all 10, 15 years ago. It's popular now because back to the intro to the show is that we're talking about tech, man, and how addicted everybody is to it and plugged in all it's the time. Stimulated, yeah, we are like over stimulated all day long, and so to take you and put you in pitch black dark floating like suspending feeling like you're in space mm -hmm. like it feel that's what it feels like right if you could feel like what it feels like to be like an anti-gravity it almost feels like that where you're just floating out you don't feel the edges of it and with no sound no light no anything for an hour when was the last time you did that you don't even do that when you sleep at night you i guarantee everybody listening right now in your bedroom you've got a couple red blinking lights or green lights or your phone or a little bit of the light creaking in from plus the there's a difference I'd between being unconscious and quiet and being conscious and quiet oh, yeah. it's very different so when you're in the float tank you could fall asleep but a lot of the time you're not. You're just consciously quiet, which it, this is a practice. This Everybody a, should do it I, one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's training wheels for meditation. Like I, I, there's people out there like me that have a hard time uh, blocking everything out, being conscious of your breathing and being able to control it. I mean, obviously, that's a practice and you have to keep doing it constantly to get good at it. Uh, but I think this is like a tool. I could look at that as be like, oh, here's what it's supposed to feel like. And, you know, I got something out of it. Well, okay. So when I look at the time it takes to do the flow and the cost, in my opinion, I think your better value is massage. I do. I think laying down quietly, having someone work on your body. Oh, well, those are awesome too. Human, get human touch. Uh, a good therapist, I think, will give you, unless you're somebody who doesn't like it. I know there's a few, there's, there are people who don't like massage, in which case, fine, do something else. But if you don't mind it, you like being, you like the touch, you like some, you know, you, you're quiet, you're not connected to your, your phone stimulus is down, but the other, the only stimulus you're getting is good stimulus from the quiet music and the person massaging you. I think that could be uh, that's more an, valuable. That's an interesting argument. I, I think they're way different. Totally, uh, but I mean, yeah. if, if you do one or the other, which one do you think? Yeah, valuable? I mean, I definitely think you. I think they. I think you, you should do both at least a, a, a one time to see what it does for you, right? Because I think both of those things can be like life changing. Uh, if you've never had a good deep tissue massage by somebody who really knows what they're doing and you get one, it's like, holy shit, I'm going to try and find a way to put this in my budget every single month or every week if I can because it's amazing. And the same thing goes for float. I mean, some people will experience it. Some people experience it and be like, ah, whatever. Other people experience it and be like, whoa, I've never been that deep into my thoughts in so long. And I think that part of it, I think, is very valuable. So I, I think everybody should at least try it that and go in Adam with a timer. <laughs> <laughs> Done talking. Yeah, that's when yeah. he keeps going, you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> Zelda kicks Sorry. on. Yeah. Piss off, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. Go do it.